Historically, development and poor land management have caused biodiversity to decline, but the environment can be enhanced by development and good land management. This is known as biodiversity net gain. It can be done on-site or off-site, and it can be achieved by creating new or enhanced biodiversity. Net gain can be achieved in towns and cities, and it can also be achieved in rural locations. Biodiversity net gain in England is underpinned by the mitigation hierarchy which is set out in the National Planning Policy Framework. This outlines a sequential approach to addressing potential harm to biodiversity in determining planning applications, and it states avoidance should be prioritised before mitigation measures and finally compensation measures are considered. AVOID aims to avoid completely or reduce biodiversity impacts through site selection and layout. Project proposals must give the highest priority to avoidance strategies in accordance with the mitigation hierarchy, which is vital to delivering cost-effective additionality. Minimize. These are measures to reduce the extent of impacts on biodiversity. Where avoidance isn't feasible, it's essential to minimize negative impact by modifying the project design and strategy. All sensitive habitats must be avoided at all costs. Mitigation can be where an on-site habitat or affected area is improved and or protected. All non-avoidable ecological damage must be compensated for, with guidance from a trained ecologist and reasoning justified by an evidence case. Offsetting aims to compensate for biodiversity loss. It's the final resort after all the other options have been exhausted, and it's usually the most expensive, complex and high-risk approach. There is a risk that mitigation or offsetting proposals will be rejected and the project does not achieve planning permission if the evidence for not avoiding or mitigating the impacts is not well demonstrated. Avoidance is the initial step in the hierarchy and often the easiest and cheapest and most effective way of reducing potential impacts. It requires biodiversity to be considered in the early stages of the project. The most effective avoidance mechanisms can be achieved by pre-application engagement with an ecologist or the local planning authority to identify the surveys needed to be undertaken and engage key local biodiversity stakeholders. Examples include site selection or location on an alternative site with less harmful impacts using relevant data, for example, by referring to local nature recovery networks and local biodiversity strategies, by using other spatial mapping tools such as DEFRA's Magic Tool, consulting local environmental record centers, carrying out an ecological assessment or a preliminary ecological appraisal if required, and associated habitat and or species or walkover surveys with the assistance of a trained ecologist. Baselining potential sites using the biodiversity metric, conducting a biodiversity net gain feasibility report, timing the construction work sensitively to minimize disturbance, and engaging an ecological consultant at site selection stage to provide constraints and opportunities analysis at an early stage. Impacts can also be avoided by retaining ecological receptors on site, but outside of the construction area. This can aid biodiversity net gain by retaining the habitats of value and providing a potential opportunity for enhancement of those areas of value. Minimize. Examples of this include indicating retained vegetation such as hedgerows and existing trees, limiting the size of the site and protecting key areas, and sensitive landscape design in line with industry best practice. A good reference is the CIEEM Biodiversity Net Gain Design Stage Report Template. Mitigate. For example, this might include replanting, tree planting to stabilize soil, grassland and habitat quality restoration in line with best practice, replacing what was lost on site with the same or different but more ecologically valuable habitat, and redesigning aspects of the site to reduce the impacts such as lighting. Biodiversity offsetting is challenging and some impacts cannot realistically be offset. However, an example of offsetting might be using biodiversity net gain offsetting mechanisms to either creating or enhancing off-site habitats either on owned land or by purchasing biodiversity units on the market or through statutory credits. Note where a proposal fails to evidence or demonstrate the considered efforts to avoid or mitigate the impacts to existing ecological resources and just relies heavily upon offsetting or compensation measures, the decision makers are likely to view that as not meeting the intended principles of biodiversity net gain and may decline the proposals. It is crucial to adopt a nature-first approach in development projects, where every effort must be made to avoid causing harm to existing biodiversity on the site. 
To successfully meet biodiversity targets, it is necessary to retain and work alongside existing natural features on site, and only use offsetting as a final resort. Many local authorities have also specified more detailed compliance requirements for the following the mitigation hierarchy and the guidance on how to do this in their local planning policies. Biodiversity net gain should be achieved in a way that is consistent with the mitigation hierarchy and which reflects the spatial hierarchy preference for local enhancements. Whilst biodiversity net gain relates only to habitats, the mitigation hierarchy is applied to all aspects of ecology and potential for avoidance, minimization, mitigation and offsetting impacts on species will also need to be considered outside of the biodiversity net gain approach. A full biodiversity net gain plan is required to be submitted before project commencement stages alongside a biodiversity metric assessment. Information outlining how the mitigation hierarchy has been adhered to, including evidence of all the steps taken to avoid and or minimize adverse biodiversity impacts must be included in this plan. Financial cost is not adequate reasoning for failing to avoid or to minimize negative effects. Across all levels of the mitigation hierarchy, biodiversity must be considered in the very early design stages of any project when aiming to achieve net gain.